people the ask me sing now it's in the make me shine I just the tell them say now Jesus the make me shine people the ask me sing now it's in the make me smile I just they tell them say now Jesus, they make me smile. I just smile, I just smile, I just smile. I just smile, I just smile, smile, smile. I just, they tell them, say, Now Jesus, they make me smile. Are they glad? 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 Glad, glad. I just they tell them say now Jesus they make me glad people they ask me say now it's in they make me shine I just they tell them say now Jesus they make me shine people they ask me say Waiting, they make me shine. I just they tell them say that Jesus they make me shine. I they shine, 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 shine, shine. I just they tell them say that Jesus they make me shine. I they glow, I they glow, I they glow, I they glow. I they glow, I they glow, glow, glow. I just they tell them say, now Jesus they make me glow. I they bling, 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 bling, bling. I just they tell them say, now Jesus they make me bling. Who they make you shine? Who they make you sparkle? Who they make you bling? Who they make you just the jolly anyhow? And Jesus, they make me jolly. Now they make me they dance. Now they make me they sing. Now they make me they feel excited. Now they make me they feel like to dance, 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 dance. Reckless dance. Just dance my heart out. <clears throat> now God, they make me feel like that. Only God can make you have that kind of feeling. Only God can make you aesthetic. Only God can make you get to that point where you you feel like you're flying without wings. Only God. And yes, if you just stumble on this video for the first time, if you're seeing this face for the very first time, if you're seeing one of these videos for the very first time, this is a chapter a day, a.k.a. a cat for short. And... Uh, it was born out of the desire of me wanting to go viral on social media. And I had this conversation with God. And then he told me, if I want to go viral his way, then I have to study the word of God. I'm like, I was taken aback. I'm a Christian, a born again child of God. Spirit filled, tongue speaking and all. But mm -mm. that's not what I was expecting. Like, I wasn't expecting God to tell me to come read the Bible life no mm -mm. i had a whole different new idea in my head but unfortunately that's not what god had in, in store and when i started doing this originally i was feeling uncomfortable i was not feeling very okay um mostly because of what people would say and then I know somehow like the Bible is not the most popular thing. Like people are not just so excited to study the Bible, to read the Bible or something. So how is that even going to be possible for us to go viral? But then I had to understand that when God says a thing, the way he does it is not the way we think it's going to happen. You know? You know, we're we're having our ways in our heads, we're having our strategies, our methods, and our ways aren't God and neither our thoughts. His ways are pathfinding. His thoughts are way beyond, beyond 
what we can even think, ask, or imagine. That's God for you. So I believe that um, if you stumble on this today, after you get done watching this, your life will be transformed, your life will be changed, and of course, you'll be glad that God spoke to you through us. God's, God speaks to each and every one of us every single day. Some days, I feel like he's speaking to me personally. <coughs> I feel like he's speaking to me personally through the message. And some days, I feel like, um, Lord, this is so hard. This is so strong. This is so deep. I also need him to bring me to the place to be able to take in the message let it sink in and let me be able to leave it because it's not enough to just be able to sit here and preach it's not be it's not enough to be able to sit here and read the bible it's not enough to be able to say this is what god is saying and you can leave it out rightly the blessings come in the doing and when you continuously do it, it becomes a lifestyle. And that's what God wants because his word says that be living epistles read of men. Some people will never read the Bible. Your life will be the only Bible they'll ever read in their entire life or entire stay here on earth. So be an exemplary Bible with your life. So in a chapter today, we get to know who we are in Christ, the power we possess. What we should and should not do because the Bible is our blueprint, it's our manual. So that we can spend a beautiful Christian life here on earth. God wants us to enjoy the kingdom. Let thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. God wants us to enjoy his will and enjoy the kingdom here on earth. So we're not only working our glory. is not only that the glory set before us to go meet Jesus and spend eternity with him you know it's also to live the christian life beautifully late here on earth before ending up in heaven eventually so that's the whole idea and of course we normally get to pray and hand over the session to god and then we get the birthday party where we give shout outs to people who are in our birthday book and after the birthday party we get the Bible party, which today is going to be Deuteronomy chapter 16, and he has 22 verses. So let's get started. But I will thank you for this day. We thank you for all you've done, you're doing, and you're still to do in our lives because in everything you give thanks to them who love God and are called according to his purpose. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for always being there. Thank you for showing us the way where there seemed to be no way. Thank you for making a way of escape for us, even when it looks like there was none. Father, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for always being there, even when we call. Thank you for protection. Thank you for provision. Thank you for all the good and amazing things that you've done, you're doing, and you're still to do in our lives. And the lives of our brothers and sisters, parents, friends, relatives, and loved ones. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Because I know you've heard an answer. Speak to us once again in a very special way today. So that our lives will be transformed some more. Increase while I decrease so it's going to be you and you alone. That will be seen, felt, and heard throughout the session of a chapter a day today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, people. Okay, so now it's going to be the birthday party. Oh, sorry, people. Our birthday book is like far, far away. Let me get that. Okay. I think that, that was close enough. Okay, it's birthday party time, and today is the 8th, 
of March 2022. Very special people on here. Very, very special. Okay, the first person we have is Mam Magdalene Magdalene. Mam Magdalene Magdalene is actually like a big sister. We live together in the same area. And um, she was a very amazing grandson. She's always um, like connected to my big sister and other um, big sisters in the area. And they do their best to look out for the younger ones like us. Thank you very much, big sis, for being your amazing self. Happy birthday, Mr. Banwe Leslie. And Mr. Banwe Leslie was actually with us at the high school level. That's where I got to meet him when the same um, school together. And um, I am like really, really proud of him because he had an ordeal when he was in, when he was writing the advanced level, he had an ordeal. <coughs> He didn't let that stop him. Like some people would have said, oh, this happened to me. That happened to me. So I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not going to give in. I'm not going to do this no more. They're just going to give up on life. But he didn't give up on life. And I'm really, really proud of him for that. And I know God is as well. And everybody who gets to know him. He's one very tenacious, very hardworking, very pushful person. And he always has this smile, like, just right in the space where he finds himself in. And then, my little sister, Balora, happy birthday to you, sweetie. And I got to know her, I think, from the radio, um, Junior Princess. <laughs> she came to the radio um, for, I think, holiday special or something. And then she worked there for a while. Sometimes she used to run the program that I was doing when I was not available. And she was really doing a great job. Thank you so much, Lara. She's also a very smart young lady. Very, very um, caring. She loves God with a passion. She just wants to serve God with all of her heart and her entire being. She's really amazing. Happy birthday, little sister. And then we also have Mam Ayuka Reitako. Mam Ayuka Reitako was actually my classmate in secondary school. And we had a small time together. She's also a very nice, calm and composed lady, you know. And uh, of course, we separated. In high school, we separated because I was in, second, in my secondary school from, from one to five. And then we separated in high school and... We ended up um, reconnecting again at our excellent group, which is nice. And she's still the amazing, nice person that she has always been, that I know her to be. And then we have Mam Tali Imelda Ate. This is my kid sister's friend. That's how I got to know her. And uh, I got to also know her um, through some of her videos that she was posting, I think on Facebook then. I don't know if she's gone on YouTube yet. She used to post them on Facebook and they're really great videos. Um, she was giving people, yeah, I think she's gone on YouTube too. She was giving people some tips on what to do, how to get yourself makeup and all those kinds of things and some lifestyle tips. Happy birthday to you, dearest. And then we have Mom Aquilar. Mom Aquilar is also one of my kid sisters. We stayed in the same area together. I mean, how they grow. They grow so fast. Like, some of them are kind of taller than us. And they look bigger than us. And sometimes when they see us, they think they're the bigger ones. But we're, like, older than them with some, like, five, six, seven years. But, yeah. <laughs> so, happy birthday to you, Laura. She also smiles and smiles like, I mean, like, for four. She can smile for the world. And, of course, how time flies we're looking at them they're like babies yeah we're young but they're like babies just like yesterday and then you're looking at them today they're all grown up um 
strong, tenacious, hardworking women. It's beautiful to watch. It's just beautiful to watch. Very hardworking, very pushful, very virtuous and all. And then we have Mam Agi Maya. Mam Agi Maya is also one very small sister to me. And uh, we've lived together for some time. And we've also related together for some time. And she is, when I say hardworking, I mean like she's super hardworking. This little girl works like a machine. She can work for the world, not for Africa. Working for Africa is small. Maya can work for the world. I mean, like, oh my God. And the good part is, you think she'll do all these things. And because she's working so much and so hard, you know, sometimes a lot of people, when they're doing that much work, they, they're not able to excel in school. Mm -mm. She's smart all round. She is smart all round. A virtuous young lady. I'm just proud of who she's becoming. It's good to watch people grow just in front of you. And they're just as amazing as she is. Happy birthday to you, Maya. I love you and God bless you. So the last but not the least on the book today is Daddy Boma Anger and Tekena Boma. So Daddy Boma and Tekena were born today. Happy birthday to you both. I wish you all the best. I've not really lived to Tekena for a while. I actually lived to Tekena just for a couple of days, maybe two or so or three. Because every single time I came to their house, he was in school. But I know he's a very smart young man. That's what I know about him. And uh, I know that he's doing great. He's doing awesome. But let's talk about Daddy Boma. Daddy Boma is that person who welcomed me to his house without even knowing me. He just knew my dad. That's all. But he took me into his house and treated me like his daughter like I could barely know the difference between me and his children I would even say I was I was sort of treated better than his children somehow and uh, I just took a liking to everybody they were really amazing and I know his daddy Boma who got them to be like this and so i'm really thankful to you daddy for all the sacrifices that you ever made for me for all the sacrifices that you taught your family to do for me i'm forever grateful i'll never forget it in a hurry i remembered some of the sessions and meetings you had especially in um house on the rock church and you took us along. <clears throat> I learned a whole lot of things. I was so proud to be your daughter. When I saw you speaking, when I saw you teaching, I was just so proud. He teaches. He's into agriculture. He's into a whole lot. But the best part is he loves God. And he's serving God with his entire being. That's just the best part. So let's take this um, people again. When I'm in Abuja anytime, anytime, any day, it's Daddy Boma. There are no two places. I don't care how sweet or beautiful your place is, but if it's not at Daddy Boma's, I'm staying. I ain't staying there. Yeah, I could visit a lot of people in Abuja, but... I would always want to stay at Daddy Boma's. <laughs> Happy birthday to you, Daddy. So let's take that again. Happy birthday, Ma Madeleine Madeleine. Happy birthday, Mr. Mbadmi Leslie. Happy birthday, Mom Balora. Happy birthday, Mom Ayuk Are Takor. Happy birthday, Mom Tali Imelda Ate. Happy birthday, Mom Aquilora. Happy birthday, Mom Agnes Meyer. And happy birthday to 
Daddy Boma Anga and Tekena Boma. Let's get a pray for these people. And after praying for them, we'll, um, we'll go ahead and get on to the Bible party, which is Deuteronomy 16, verse 22. So let's go. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for all these amazing people who are born today. The ones that we've read their names out, the ones we don't even know about, but they were born on this particular day. Father, I pray that you're going to bless each and every one of them. Open the windows of heaven upon their lives in the mighty name of Jesus and rebuke every devourer. Lord, I decree and declare, O oh God, that today will be a day that they would rejoice and be glad in you because it's a day you've made for them and them alone. And Lord, you're going to do marvelous things in their lives. Father, I pray that even as you open the pages of their lives today, you're going to write beautiful stories that will cause them to remain rejoicing, singing, and dancing. If you tarry to come by your grace, they'll be here physically next year testifying to your goodness. Lord, I pray you perfect all that consents them and give them a Psalms 126 state, a state of continuous laughter, singing, dancing, and rejoicing in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray, oh God, and you're going to open doors for them that no man can shut. And shut every door that is not opened by you. Father, I pray, oh God, that you're going to enlighten them and make them understand that they are destiny helpers to some people. And they'll strategically position themselves to help these people when the time comes. And I also pray that you're going to open the eyes and the understanding of their own destiny helpers to be strategically positioned around their lives. So when they also call for help, help is going to show up from them. East, west, north, south, from back and center, above and beyond. Lord, that help is going to come through for them. Lord, I pray, oh God, you're the God who lifts one up and brings one down. That as you lift them up, oh Lord, you're going to teach them all the strategies and techniques and methods that will cause them to not only get to the top, but to permanently stay at the top. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, Abba Father, because I know you're always here and answer, Lord. I pray, oh God, this day, that you're going to show us the way, that we're going to work the part, that we're not going to miss it. We know every time in every single person's life, they get to be that point where you're overwhelmed, you're tired, you feel like you want to give up, you feel like you want to back out, you feel like everything is not just going at all. But Lord, we're not going to give up, we're not going to back out, we're not going to stray apart because we're going to hear a clean, loud, clear voice that's going to say, this is the way, walk down in it. Father, I pray, oh God, you cause this ones to be trailblazers, space setters, and wall changes. Cause them to increase in wisdom and stature, gaining favor before God and before man. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you're going to teach them the way. You're going to show them how to do life, oh God. So they'll, go, they'll do life only the Christ way. And people will see your good works in their lives and glorify our Father who is in heaven. That because there will be an overflow of blessing upon their lives, people will literally rub off of the blessings when they come in contact with them. And I pray that there will be a blessing in their generation and beyond. Father, we just begin to bless your holy name. Let your blessings encompass them as a shield round about, so no weapon formed to fashion against them shall prosper. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that their gifts are going to make a way for them, causing them to stand before kings, not before mean men. And Lord, I pray, O oh God, that your word is going to be a light unto their part and a lamb unto their feet. That they're not going to stumble and fall, but they're going to see the way and they're going to be able to walk in it right. Father, I pray, O oh God, you're going to cause them to shine brighter and brighter onto the perfect day. Whatever the lady your hands on, prosper it. Whatever that you teach their hands to prosper, teach their hands to make wealth, teach your fingers to battle in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we just bless your holy name. We'll give you all the glory, all the honor and adoration. We pray, O oh Lord, that you're going to be able to um, help this ones, O oh God, to see you and see life through the lens of God and not through their eyes so that they're going to be able to trust you fully, totally and completely. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Let money meet money in their pockets. Blessing meet blessings in their lives. Favor meet favor in their lives. Even as they go and conquer their world in Jesus' name. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, Ancients of Days. Because I know you always hear and answer. You deserve all the praise, both now and forevermore. Take preeminence, Heavenly Father, because I know 
you're in control. We seal every prayer request with the blood of Jesus, knowing that it is signed, sealed, and settled, knowing that it is done and dusted. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because I know you always hear and answer us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let it be so. Amen. 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 In their lives. Amen. Let it be so. Amen. In their lives. As we pray, we seal the prayers. Amen. 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 With the blood of Jesus. Amen. Let it be so. Amen. As we pray. Amen. Amen, people. Amen. Okay, so we're getting straight on to the Bible party, and it's from Deuteronomy chapter 16, and it has 22 verses. That's going to be a short read. Welcome, Mr. Chad Elvis. Thank you for always coming through. He's always very busy. They're really, really busy people, but they find the time every single season to come and be blessed by the word of God or to bless us in their own little way. We say thank you. We don't take it for granted. We appreciate you. And we pray that the Lord who sees will not forget to reward you. He always rewards those who labor for him and they are genuine and sincere. So we know God is going to bless you and open the windows of heaven upon your life. In Jesus name. So let's get the Bible party started. We're supposed to be reading this. Are you ready? Ready or not? Here I come. Deuteronomy chapter 16. Observe that the month of Abib. Observe the month. Deuteronomy chapter 16. Observe the month of Abib and keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. For in the month of Abib, the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of Egypt by night. Thou shalt therefore sacrifice the Passover unto the Lord thy God of the flock and herd in the place which the Lord shall choose to place his name there. Thou shalt eat no living bread within. Seven days shalt thou eat unleavened bread therewith, even the bread of affliction. For thou comest forth out of the land of Egypt in haste that thou mayest remember the day when thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt all the days of thy life. And there shall be no laven bread seen with thee in all thy coasts seven days, neither shall there anything Sorry, people. And there shall be no living bread seen with thee in all thy coast seven days. Neither shall there You know what people? Let's just start from the very beginning again. The bikes coming through. Sometimes it's so loud in my ears. I don't know if you all are getting them. But <clears throat> I just feel like I need to. Um, wait so the sound is really gone and gone gone really far but sometimes when I'm editing the videos I feel like the sound wasn't getting in but I'm not sure which one gets in and which one doesn't so I just wait for all of them either ways so I'm really sorry so let's just start all over we're still at um, we're still at verse 4 so we're not far away so let's just start again Deuteronomy chapter 16 Observe the month of Abib and keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. For in the month of Abib the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of Egypt by night. Thou shalt therefore sacrifice the Passover unto the Lord thy God of the flock and of the herd in the place which the Lord shall choose to place his name there. Thou shalt eat no living bread with it. Seven days shalt thou eat unleavened bread therewith, even the bread of affliction, for thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt in haste, that thou mayest remember the day when thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt all the days of thy life. And there shall be no living bread seen with thee in all thy coast seven days, 
neither shall there anything of the flesh which thou sacrificest it the first day at even remain all night until the morning thou mayest not sacrifice the passover within any of thy gates which the lord thy god giveth thee but at the place which the lord thy god shall choose to place his name in there shalt thou there thou shalt sacrifice the passover at even at the going down of the sun at the season that thou camest forth out of egypt and thou shalt roast and eat it in the place which the lord thy god shall choose and thou shalt turn in the morning and go unto thy tents six days thou shalt eat unleavened bread and on the seventh day shall be a solemn assembly to the lord thy god thou shalt do no work therein seven weeks shalt thou number unto thee begin to number the seven weeks from such time as thou beginnest to put the sickle to the corn and thou shalt keep the feast of weeks unto the lord thy god with a tribute of a free will offering of thine hand which thou shalt give unto the lord thy god according as the lord thy god had blessed thee and thou shalt rejoice before the lord thy god thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy maid man seven and thy maid seven and the levite that is within thy gates and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow that are among you in the place which the lord thy god had chosen to place his name there and thou shalt remember that thou wast a born man in egypt and thou shalt observe and do the statutes thou shalt observe the feast of the tabernacle seven days after that thou hast gathered in thine corn and thy wine and thou shalt rejoice in thy feast thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy man seven and thy maid seven and the levite the stranger and the fatherless and the widow that are within thy gate seven days shalt thou keep a solemn feast unto the lord thy god in the place which the lord shall choose because the lord thy god shall bless thee in all thine increase and in all the works of thine hands therefore thou shalt surely rejoice three times in a year shall all thy meals appear be before the lord thy god in the place which he shall choose in the feast of unleavened bread and in the feast of weeks and in the feast of tabernacles and they shall not appear before the lord empty <clears throat> every man shall give as he is able according to the blessing of the lord thy god which he had given thee georges and officers shall thou make thee in all thy gates which the lord thy god giveth thee throughout thy tribes and they shall judge the people with just judgment thou shalt not rest judgment thou shalt not respect persons neither take a gift for a gift doth blind the eyes of the wise and pervert the words of the righteous that which is altogether just shalt thou follow that thou mayest live and inherit the land which the lord thy god giveth thee thou shalt not plant thee a grove of any tree near unto the altar of the lord thy god which thou shalt make thee neither shalt thou set thee up any image which the lord thy god hateth <clears throat> Okay, people, let's get right to the start. What did you learn? What did you learn? What did you learn? Well, God always wants us to remember where we're coming from so that we're always going to be, should I say humble? We're always going to stay on track. You know, once in a while, we need to remember where we came from so we can remain humble. Some people slowly but surely forget where they're coming from. And that's why when they get to a particular level in life, they kind of want to intimidate everybody. They kind of want to use their power the wrong way. They kind of want to step on other people because they've grown to a particular level. They kind of feel this themselves like better human beings than others, you know. So they start treating other people with contempt. That's not what God wants. So he wants each and every one of us to always remember where we came from. 
and of course we remember when we came from one we remember the things he has brought us through okay so um you know where you came from you know how you started you know how your life was you know the kind of family you came from <clears throat> that really helped me when i was in secondary school because believe me there was a group in my secondary school that it felt like everybody wanted to be a part of that group but it was so expensive i can't remember how i found out but i learned that um that group they were like i don't know if they're seven or more but i don't know but let's just say for example they're 10 and you have to spend ten dollars like you have to spend ten dollars for 10 people which is like a hundred dollars after every 10 days you know so i don't know how they used to do lunch how they used to do dinner but it's just like you had to be a certain level to be able to be in that group i know where i'm coming from like why am i going to take a hundred dollars after every 10 days to feed 10 people because i want to belong to a group i know where i'm coming from i know what my father can afford my father wasn't poor but he wasn't super rich either so i'm not going to go and join a group where i can end up stealing to have to live up to the standards but we do that every single day especially teenagers you don't have to be with some group of people to be the best version. When people are making you stretch yourself like to the maxima to have to be amongst them, then you have no bloody reason being amongst them in the first place. That's just the wrong place you should be at. Yes, I'm telling you. People who love you and people who care about you will not make you stretch yourself and go out of your limit, out of your your, your capabilities to be able to live a certain lifestyle, to be able to be of a certain standard. I knew what was coming from people, so I knew that group was not going to be me. Yes, it's a beautiful thing to have to be amongst the people that everybody wants to look up to or everybody wants to talk to or everybody wants to relate to it. Of course, who doesn't want to relate with something that looks like success? Everybody wants to relate with success. But real success is not in all those things. I can eat less than $10 during a break for myself and I'll be fine. Like there were really amazing things that you could get at the school canteen that were less than $10 and you'll be filled up and good. But because you want to live up to standards with these ladies, you're putting yourself in trouble. You have to spend $100 after every 10 days. Someone will say, oh, but they also spend for you. But after every 10 days, do you have $100 to spend? Is your pocket money even up to that? Can you live with it? Can you be able to be consistent with it? And then you start trying to reach out and then you, you hear some people now start dating guys. Some people start doing all kinds of awful things so that they can live up to standards. So they don't get laughed at. They don't get mocked and all those kinds of things. It's wrong, people. Don't try to live in the space of people. Live in your space. They normally say, cut your coat according to your size. It's not your size. Cut your coat according to your material. If you have material that can cut, that can sew you just a jacket, sew a jacket. If you have material that can just design a dress that you have, design the dress that you have. So you can, if you have to cut your coat according to your size, then whose material are you going to use to cut the coat? If I'm a chubby person and I have just like one yard of material, I can't be expecting that I'm going to use that one yard to sew a gown. Even me who is tiny, wincy bitsy like this, I can't even use one yard to sew a gown for myself. Like a, a really nice pretty gown. I can't use one yard to sew it. You know, so you're not going to tell me that cut your coat according to your size. It's according to your material. So maybe that material can actually sew me a, 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 a demi top or something. You know, maybe you can actually design a, a dress I have. I would do that because that's what my material can do. And I'll still look gorgeous. I'll still look beautiful. God gave us all this creative abilities, not for a waste but to use them right. And so how is this connected? Know where you're coming from. You need to know where 
you're coming from. And God was giving them the instructions on what they needed to do during the seasons, what they needed to do during that month, what they needed to do when they were remembering the Passover. And Passover was basically the day that the children of Israel were led out of Egypt, um, where Pharaoh actually let them go, you know. He had been holding on and holding on and holding on and proving tough. And then this particular day of the Passover, was the Passover about? That was the day where the children of Israel had to put blood all around their um, houses. And then um, the angel of death was going to come and pass around and destroy all the firstborns in every family, in every house, especially in Egypt. And uh, if your house was someplace, you had to cover it up. Um, a couple of Egyptians who had started following the Israelites were saved because they also did what the Egyptian, what the Israelites were doing and it helped them. So the people you associate yourself with matter a lot because of your association, you can get blessed by just associating with them. That's how I say people rub off literally of the blessings that are overflowing in your life. That's how it is. So they had to do all these things. They had a particular way that God wanted them to do it. You eat unleavened bread for a number of days and you do this, you do that. So God was giving them instructions and these instructions were very important. Imagine that someone actually killed the lamb that passed overnight and didn't rub it on the doorpost of the house. It's like God said, the angel of death will kill the, their children, the firstborns. That's it. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Don't tell me that. Oh, what kind of instruction is that? Our God has been telling us to do all kinds of things. He has been telling us to do this and do that and do that. We've done it, but today we're still in Egypt. Why are you be telling us now to go and be rubbing blood on the doorpost of our houses? What kind of thing is that? God's ways are not ours. His ways are past finding. So just obey. Trust God fully. We have to get to that place where will fully and completely trust God. And we entrust everything about our lives in his hand and say, Jesus, truly take the wheel. We have to get to that place. We have to get to that place where we say, Jesus, take the wheel. And we really mean it. We mean it like Jesus truly, sincerely take the wheel. And so he says, we'll offer the sacrifices and do all the things in the place where God chooses. So are you in the place where God has chosen or are you in the place where you chose? Divine positioning is very important. You need to be at the place where God wants you to be the time when he wants you to be there for a lot of things to happen in our lives. Sometimes some things are not happening to us, not because God doesn't want those things to happen, but because we're not in the right place, because we've not strategically positioned ourselves to be where God wants us to be. So the blessings are hanging. Mm -hmm. Maybe God knows that if you are, if I'm in um, maybe Ghana right now, there's some business opportunity that is only possible to happen in Ghana. And because I'm not in Ghana, I can't get it. And because I can't get it, it will look like God ain't blessing me. My blessing is tied to being in Ghana and getting connected to that business opportunity. And as long as I'm being disobedient of being in Ghana instead of being in Thailand, I wouldn't get that blessing. <clears throat> and many other things that follow it. If it's a business deal, I get connected to that business deal, the business will be growing. And as it's growing, I'm gaining some more and some more and I'm gaining connections and just like that. But if I don't even start the business at all, what's gonna happen? You know, <clears throat> maybe because I'm not in Ghana, so I'm here struggling and hustling and, and trying to make ends meet. Meanwhile, God is saying, Princess, I've said go to Ghana. That's where I'm going to make things happen. Isaac might have gone right or right to Egypt, but he would not have been able to make a hundredfold like he did by staying back. So you see, be where God wants you to be when he wants you to be there. So when he says he will make them and show them where they should do the sacrifices, they had to do it the exact way he was saying it. They had to put it in the exact place that he was asking them to put it. Obedience 
is better than sacrifice. And I tell you the truth, it's not very easy, but it's possible. And sometimes it's not just easy, it's even just not, not easy at all because the thing will sound so foolish or so stupid or so daft that you'll be wondering like, God, do you really want me to do this thing like this? <clears throat> yes, he does. Just be sure he wants you to do it and go ahead and do it. Okay. And he kept giving them more instructions on days and weeks and months, how they're going to pay tribute to God. And uh, you needed to give a free will offering, which you give unto God for all that he has blessed you. You needed to give a free will offering. A lot of people don't believe in offering. I believe a whole lot in offering and tithing. So please, if you don't, I urge you to just do it. Just do it for let me just do it for doing sake. Don't don't even do it because you have an understanding, but just do it. And see how God is going to bless you. And say, Thou shalt rejoice before the Lord thy God, thou and thy sons and thy daughters, and thy man seven and thy maid seven, and the Levites thou were thee, that is within thy gates, and the stranger and the fatherless and the widows that are among you in the place which the Lord thy God has chosen to place his name there. Lord loves when we take care of widows, of strangers, of orphans. He loved it. Just in the scripture, I think he spoke about widows, orphans, strangers about three or four times. Just within a couple of verses. He repeated it over and over and over. And he said, you need to observe all these feasts that are there. You And you don't just do it alone. Sometimes people come to church and they leave their children. No, I, I leave the child with a nanny, just small. It's not small. Bring them from small. The Bible says, I, I'm not sure exactly. We need to catch them young. I don't know if that's how it's said, but I'm just kind, kind of trying to paraphrase. Or it's something that someone said. Say so we need to catch them young. It's very, very easy to be able to bend and fix and point to a particular direction when they're younger than when they're older. Yeah, that's the truth. When they're younger, it's easy to bend them, to break them and put them in the right place and in the right perspective than when they're older. <coughs> so, people of God, it is amazing. It is good. Is it? It is lovely when you see the things that God is doing in your life. So, do it with your family. Don't say, oh, this one is small. This one is a baby. You know, my dad normally says, wake up even the children when it's time for devotions. Let them come for morning devotions. Don't leave them and say they're just children. You don't know how that word is dropping in their spirits. And their spirits are capturing it. And eventually, it's going to help them. He said there was a man who didn't believe in God. But he had gone to Sunday school several times. And... He just didn't like it. He grew up and he says he didn't like it and everything. And life was just having a quick one on him. And then he had this accident. He felt like he was going to hell. And then he just started singing the song. Um, what was that song again? Something about the light. Light of God. Oh, Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. He actually learned that song. From Sunday school. He said from the start. He didn't even know how to sing it. He just started humming it. You know he just started humming it. And then as he was humming it. The, the words were coming to his head. The words were coming to his mind. And then he started singing the song. And boom. He just saw that he jacked out of um, the place where he was going. The dark place where he was going. And God took him back and brought him back to life. And he said that experience changed his life forever. It is a beautiful thing to truly serve God. It is a beautiful thing to truly be be into God, to totally and completely serve God and love God. It is a beautiful thing. So, um, the Word of God is true. The Word of God is here and amen. The Word of God is faithful. Okay, and 
Still, they are given instructions three times in a year shall all thy meals appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose, in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and in the Feast of Weeks, and in the Feast of Tabernacles, and, of course, you have to do it with your entire family. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessings of the Lord thy God, which he hath given thee. Sometimes, I don't know why it's hard for us to give. I don't know why it's hard for us to bless people. Maybe it's because it's a gift for me, so it's easy. It comes to me naturally. So I kind of feel like everybody should. But I don't think God's going to tell us to do something that he knows we can do. And when they say giving, most times, why, why I learned to be a giver to the core is I've learned that giving doesn't only have to do with finances. It doesn't only have to do with material things. You can also give your services. You can give your time. You can give, um, I don't know, you can give a whole lot of things that do not involve money. You can do that too. As much as you can also give money. The money they give it, you know. But if you don't have money, there are lots and lots of things that you can give. You can just visit that friend. You can just sing or pray for someone. You can just wish them happy birthday. You can just call the person and say, I love you. You can just, like, there's just tons and tons of things that can be done. And believe you me, when I say, you can just go ahead and ask God for strategies of things to do. To be able to give. Ask God for gift ideas. And you being or. Of the things God can teach you. Judges and officials shall thou make thee in all thy gates. Which the Lord thy God giveth thee throughout thy tribes. And they shall judge the people with just judgments. We can't do this work alone. We need people to help us. We need people that when we write the vision and make it plain. They'll read it and run with it. You have to first of all get to God. And know what God wants you to do. And when you know it, write it down and make it plain. So they that read it will be able to run with it. Some people can run with your vision because they don't understand it. You've probably written it, but you've not written it right. So go back to God again and let him give you the right, bright ideas, the right way to run the vision so when you write it down and you make it plain, everybody who reads it will be able to run with it. Okay? And it says, Thou shalt not rest judgment. Thou shalt not respect persons. Neither take a gift for a gift doth blind the eyes of the wise and pervert the words of the righteous. That is Bible talking about it. It's not me. It's not me. It's corruption. A lot of times when we take gifts from people, when people have done a lot of nice things to us, people sometimes think I'm rude or I'm mean or I'm ungrateful. Why do they think that? Because I go face you, tell you as it is. That you gave me a gift today doesn't mean I'm not going to tell you what you're doing that is not right tomorrow. If I see it, I'll tell you. And I don't tell you because... I'm just trying to despise you or I'm just trying to make fun of you. I'm telling you because I love you. If you loved me enough to give me a gift yesterday, then I should love you enough to be able to tell you the truth when the time comes. It doesn't matter. It might even be when you're giving me the gift. As you just finished giving me a gift and you're doing something that is not wrong, I will call you to order. If God gives me the grace, if God gives me the insight, if God shows me that this is what we need to call your attention to, I will call your attention to it unapologetically, unashamedly. And I would love you to do the same because someone will say, oh, she's talking about, no, I would love you to do the same. The Bible says the one God loves, he chastises because an orphan, he doesn't have time for an orphan. Nobody has time for an orphan. But you, because you are his child, because he has called you his own. He chastises you when you do wrong. He corrects you when you do wrong so that you become better. He prunes you and purges you so that you become better. He refines you because he's the refiner fire. He purifies you because he's a purifier. 
so that you should come out being your best version, so that you should come out being that masterpiece that he had designed and ordained from the beginning before he formed the world. He knew you. So before you appeared here on earth, God already knew you. He doesn't know you now. He's in present. He's in the past. He's in the future. He already knows you past now. So he's the safest place to rest in. Rest in God. Rest in Jesus. So don't collect some gifts from people. When you collect some gifts from people, it pacifies you, it blinds your eyes, it blinds your judgment because you're feeling like, oh, you're indebted to this person. This person has been very kind to you. How can you now start telling them this kind of thing? It will look in a type of way. And we're always worried about the type of way that it's going to look in the face of people, in front of people. We're worried about not losing our friendships. But we don't think about the fact that if we're making friendship with the world, then we're an enemy to, we're an enemy to God. And I don't think you want to be in that position. In the position where you're an enemy to God. No. No. So let's get to address these issues while the time is right. Let's get to address these issues while we can. It is very, very important. So be careful the gifts you take. Be careful the things you do so you don't get blinded, so that your judgment doesn't get thwarted, so that you don't start feeling uncomfortable, you don't start feeling guilty, or you don't start feeling indebted to people. And you want to do things for them. Meanwhile, you know very well that those things aren't okay. Someone has helped you and helped you and helped you. And you're not at the university and they want you to do something. And it's something that is not godly. You're going to tell them straight up you ain't doing it. You're grateful that they've helped you. They're helping you and they'll probably help you till the end. But you ain't going to solve the relationship you have with God. Joseph said, I can't do this kind of evil to my God. It was not even more or less about Potiphar. He says, to my God. So when you're God conscious, when you're God focused, you would not do a lot of things that you could do if you were just people conscious, if you were just Papa or Mama conscious. Because a lot of people do some terrible things behind the scene because they are mama and papa conscious or they're Christian conscious, you know, or when Christians are around, they have to act in a type of way. And then when Christians are not around, they can act anyhow. It is not that way. That's not what God wants. He says that you better be hot or cold because if you look warm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. Take your side, take your peak. Stop going left, right, from back and center. Take a stand and stay in the position so you see the blessings of God upon your life. And it says, That which is altogether just shall thou follow, that thou mayest live and inherit the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Um, people of God, my eye is twitching so hard. Like it's literally flee. Oh my God. <laughs> kind of when we're younger I used to know that that's money coming it's really really fleeting that which is altogether just shall thou follow and thou mayest live and inherit the land that the Lord thy God giveth thee and so we always are worried like oh we're not getting the possessions we're not getting all these nice things why are we not getting them because they are actually some commandments attached to getting those things. We come down here and we're going to quote this scripture to ourselves and hold on to it in faith. But we've not done the previous things that God told us to do. To not take gifts that will blind our eyes and blind our judgments so we can speak straightforward. And when we speak straightforward and correct wrong that is wrong and applaud right that is right, then the Lord our God will give us the land that he has promised that we're going to inherit it and would we'll live long. We'll get into the land and we'll live long. So there's some principles, there's some strategies and techniques that you have to use to be able to 
obey God and trust him. And it's still him that will teach you those techniques. If you ask him, if you ask him, he'll teach you. Thou shalt not plant thee a grove of any tree near unto the altar of the Lord thy God, which thou shalt make. Neither shalt thou set thee up any image which the Lord thy God hated. The Lord hates image. It says, do not create of any image on the earth, in the air, on the waters, wherever. Do not create no image like that. So sometimes when I see people doing that and they're saying, oh, we're just honoring, we're not worshiping and we're doing this, we're not doing that. When you stand before the throne of God, you will know whether that excuse that you're giving right now is founded or not. But I pray, I pray that it doesn't get to that day and then you miss it. I so pray with all of my heart that you realize it, you get it right, and you ain't going to miss it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. People, this is where we're wrapping up for today. I don't know whatever you learned. I don't know if you have something to put in the chat that you learned or something that a spirit minister to you that you should bless us with. It's beautiful, Lord. I pray, oh God, for each and every one of us as your word has come through. Help us to be able to live by it. Help us to be able to be um, amazing, <clears throat> amazing people here on earth doing your will, being living epistles, right of man. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, King of Glory. I just worship your holy name. I give you all the praise because you deserve it. Thank you for such a time as this. We give you all the glory, but now forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I always get to say I love you so, so very much, but God loves you way, way more. Get to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get all our updates each time we upload a new video or we get to go live. Of course, I'm truly, truly excited about all that God is doing for us, with us, through us, on a chapter a day. I, for one, I think I'm blessed the most because... God honored me, saw me worthy to be able to come and sit in front of you and read the Bible and we do a conversation about it. And someone is going to say, but I can't do this. I can't go live and speak every single day. You can share what I've just done. That's an indirect way of preaching. <clears throat> and you sure will get a reward for it because God always rewards his own. He always does. So thank you once again for being here today. I really appreciate it. Um, it has been your favorite girl, Princess Clayton, Queen of Hearts and Laughter. <laughs> I was already laughing in my heart before I would even say the laughter. And I'm hoping that tomorrow we're going to be here at the same time. Um, study Deuteronomy chapter 17. And let's come back here today and have a swell time. Happy Women's Day to all the women. Um, I don't know if this is only in Africa. Or it's all around the world, but... Happy Women's Day to all the women, wherever it's Women's Day today. Happy Women's Day to all you. <clears throat> and I pray that God is going to give you your heart's desires. And I posted a message today for women. Um, I don't even think it's really only for women, but some men too, because there's some men who work their hearts out and forget that if they go, they're going to be automatically replaced. So... Um, do your due diligence and rest if you have to. Give yourself some time. Give yourself a treat if you have to, you know. And uh, what else? I think that's basically it for today. I really, really love you all so very much. But I got to go now. Until tomorrow. Ciao, ciao.